What's up everyone? Welcome back to console. Um, again, I'm going to keep this introduction brief uh, because it's a follow-up to the previous two videos. Uh, if you haven't watched those, I highly recommend those, otherwise you're going to be very lost in this video. Um, in this one, we're going to take all the parsing that we did from the previous video and we're going to use those to actually emit code. And uh, we'll have a completed parser by the end of the video, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, this is part three and uh, presumably the final part of the tutorial. Um, effectively, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the parser from the previous tutorial and we're going to use that to actually emit C code, which we'll then compile and run as we go through uh, the various functionality. So uh, Dr. Henley kind of outlines the idea here uh, very nicely. Uh, effectively, we're going to, in our parser that we wrote in the previous video, uh, we're going to pump out C code basically for every single line that our parser has parsed. Uh, obviously our parser isn't parsing lines, so it's gonna be a little bit more complex than that, but what he's showing you here is like uh, the equivalent C code to the line of teeny tiny code, right? And you can see that it's not gonna be exactly one-to-one, -one. it's gonna be very close, uh, but this gets the general idea across of what our emitter is going to be responsible for in the teeny tiny compiler. This GIF right here is also uh, very useful, right, for visualizing what exactly is going on here. Like, it's a combination of the lexer, the parser, and the emitter all working in tandem in one GIF for a very simple statement. So it illustrates quite nicely uh, what exactly is going on in our compiler as a whole. But in particular, the emitter part is what we're going to be writing, right? So we've already written the parser. It's already building this little tree. We've already written the lexer, which is parsing out the tokens that get passed to the parser that create the parse tree. Uh, but now inside each of these nodes, if you will, of the parse tree, uh, we're going to actually spit out on the appropriate C code. Uh, so we'll have like C code for the print statement, which maps to a particular C code that will get written. Uh, we'll have the same thing for like identifiers and let statements and all these other statements. Uh, we'll have basically a map to C code. One thing to note here though is uh, we're not building an AST, right? The typical compiler will build an AST, which is an internal representation, an intermediate rep representation of the code. Uh, it's an actual tree with all the state uh, associated with the, the code gen that's going to be done. Uh, in order for optimizations to take place, right? In order to keep this tutorial simple, which uh, I can't say enough, I really uh, appreciate Dr. Henley doing that uh, because we're focusing on the more important aspects of the compiler. But in order to do that, we've foregone the AST, right? And so we're just gonna dump the code directly to another file in order to understand uh, what an emitter typically does. But in general, in a professional compiler, uh, you'll have an AST step and you'll be emitting code to an intermediate representation that will eventually be optimized. So the first step here is well, we're just going to create this emitter class uh, and you'll notice that I forget to import it <laughs> if you're paying close attention. Uh, but we are just going to create this emitter class and we're going to uh, give it a file to output the code that we're going to be generating to. In this case, we're going to call it out.c and then we're going to pass this emitter class into our parser. You'll see here in a second that the emitter class is very, very simple. Uh, but it's necessary in order to uh, kind of maintain the state of the output file in the parser itself. So right here is the emitter class that we used uh, just, just a few seconds ago. And uh, this is a very simple class, as I said before, it's basically going to maintain its code in a, in a variable, in a header in a variable, and then eventually write all of that out to a file when you call write file. If you notice at the end of the uh, main function, we call write file on the emitter. And uh, in between all of that, basically we're just gonna take a bunch of strings as parameters and add them to either the code section or the header section and then write the header and then the code at the very end. Again, very simple class, um, but we need to make use of this inside the parser and that's where the majority of the complexity lies. We'll see that in a second. Okay, so this is the uh, parser. Uh, we've already passed in the emitter as an argument in main.py. We've already created the emitter class. We just need to make sure that our parser takes it as an argument. Um, so when we call self.emitter, emit line or whatever, uh, parser knows where to get that class. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're going to start emitting statements. And the first statement we're gonna, we're going to uh, emit here are the headers, right? The standard C stuff, right? You know you need a pound include standard IO and you know you need a int main void. So before we even start parsing the program at all, we're immediately gonna emit those. And then you can see we're also gonna emit return zero and the closing curly brace because 
every C program needs those no matter what the contents of the C program is. Uh, so we're going to make use of the emitter immediately to do that. And you can kind of see how we're going to use the emitter uh, just by looking at these two statements. Uh, we're just going to keep calling it with strings of code uh, depending on what we've done inside of the parser itself, right? So this gives us a very easy, simple example of how we're going to use the emitter throughout the rest of the video. Okay, uh, at this point, uh, I'm just I'm going to take that very basic test case that we just created with the header and the footer, and I'm just going to make sure that we can actually emit code. And uh, you'll see here, as I mentioned earlier in the video, that indeed I forgot to uh, import the in class, the uh, emitter class, in the main function. And so I'll quickly fix that. And then after fixing that, you should see it actually works here in a second. And indeed, when I cat the out file, uh, you can see that we're getting the a C program finally working, right? You can see Dr. Henley's full caps. Oh, our compiler just compiled something. <laughs> indeed, if you've been following the videos, you know, it's been two long videos and now this is the third one. And we finally are able to achieve, you know, compilation, taking our basic language and uh, spitting out some code from it. It's, it's actually pretty cool. Okay, now that we have the header and the footer written, uh, the next kind of most simplest case is the print statement, right? Uh, it's a very simple statement and you can kind of assume certain things about it. You don't need to know much state about the program when you're doing a print. So uh, it's just as simple as like emitting out the printf and then the name of the token. Uh, depending on whether the token is a string or a... Basically, we're going to treat all other variables, I mean numeric variables, as floats in C. Um, so depending on if the the token that we're trying to print is a string, we'll just print it out. And if it's not, we'll convert it to a float and then print the float out. So here I'm testing out that print code, right? And you can see the C compiler itself is actually throwing an error. And that's because uh, we haven't written anything for the expressions yet. So. Uh, I am indeed printing something out, but uh, there's nothing inside that float uh, that I'm emitting, that print statement for the float that I'm emitting, and so the compiler's starting there. Eventually, we will get to expressions, but they're a little bit more complex than the other ones, and so we're kind of going to save those for the last. Okay, so we've emitted the uh, C code for print, and now we're going to do the same thing for if. Uh, this one's also fairly straightforward, uh, which is why we're kind of doing these ones first. Uh, it gives you a good idea of what we're trying to achieve in this video. You can see here I'm literally just uh, emitting out the if statement. Uh, eventually we'll have something in there. Uh, currently there will be nothing though. Uh, but eventually we'll have something in there. And then uh, the open and closing parentheses, the closing bracket, and then we'll close the, the bracket itself. So basically anytime you see an if in the parser, uh, we're going to spit out this equivalent C code. Okay, and now the next one is the while loop, and it's basically going to be exactly the same right here. Uh, the only difference is we'll be using while rather than uh, uh, if. Uh, but again, we haven't written the comparison code, C code, for the comparison parse uh, case switch, if you will. Uh, and so obviously, again, there will be nothing there. We'll, we'll do that eventually, though. And now it's time for another little test. Uh, it should illustrate quite nicely what I'm talking about here. You can see in the while, the, the while statement, right? It's empty. There's no expression inside the while. There's no comparison inside the while because we haven't written the emitter code for that yet. But you can see that we've emitted all this other C code uh, just based on like what our parser has parsed and what we've decided to emit for each of those statements. So here is the uh, emitter code for label and go to. I'm not going to spend too much time on those because they're also very straightforward. Okay, uh, now we're getting into something a little bit more interesting here. We're coding the let expression in the uh, basic programming language, uh, which is basically variable assignment in C. You can think of it as variable assignment anytime we use this late keyword. Uh, the difference is uh, there's a difference between using a variable and assigning a variable or defining a variable in C, whereas here we use let for both cases. So we, that, if you remember from the previous video, right, we were storing the symbols we'd seen previously in order to throw parser errors if a variable gets defined twice, or if you try and use a variable previous to defining it, right, things like this. Well, we can leverage that same logic, that same set that we're maintaining inside the parser, that same state, in order to decide whether or not this is like a, a definition of the, of the file, or sorry, of the variable, or if we're just using the variable, right? You can see here, inside the set we check the set 
And if, if the variable hasn't been defined in that set previously, we're gonna emit the code to define the variable. Otherwise, we're gonna treat it as if it's a assignment, basically. And here again, we're going to test that uh, out and we can see that indeed we are defining those float variables at the top. As I said before, everything's going to be a float in our C code just to make things easier. Um, the, those variables are getting defined at the top of the main function and then later we're, we're able to use them. Obviously you can't uh, assign you know, an empty semicolon, right? That's not valid C code, but uh, we're getting there. All right, this section might be one of the more complex in terms of code that we actually emit. Um, and this is for taking an input, right? And it would be effectively be the scanf function in C. Uh, so we're going to kind of do the same thing, but you have to do a little bit of trickery here because the scanf uh, returns zero if there's no input. So there's a little bit of logic here, but that's effectively what we're doing. I wouldn't pay too much mind to it. Um, we're basically just emitting the code to read input, user input in our programming language. This is just the equivalent C code. It just happens to have a little bit of edge case-ness to it that the other ones don't have. Okay, now we're kind of putting the final piece of the puzzle together. We're going to uh, emit the code for the uh, expressions and it just happens that the first expression we're going to code for is the comparison expression. Um, but so this actually ends up being very, very simple to code up because of the way Dr. Henley did this. Uh, the parser is doing a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of like the tree traversals of the expressions. And uh, had he not done that, I think this section would have been a nightmare to code up. But it turns out to be, you know, very straightforward uh, from a code emission perspective because the parser was coded so elegantly uh, such that these, all these expressions are very easy. They're really just a matter of like printing out the current token for the most part. Okay, now for the moment of truth, we're going to compile that uh, Fibonacci code that we had written before, and we're going to see if we can actually take some input and print out some Fibonacci numbers. And it works. Look at that. So we were able to compile uh, the basic code for Fibonacci uh, into C code and then execute that C code all through our compiler. Basically, uh, your compiler now works. Uh, well, I'm gonna run one more test here. He's got this like averaging uh, bit of code, and so I'm gonna write that really quickly. I think I even just copy paste it and see if it indeed, if this syntax also works in our compiler, and it also works. So uh, pat yourself on the back. You've written a full full blown compiler. Uh, not many people can say that they've done that. <laughs> Let's just see this, our uh, hard work. It seems so, uh, you know, it seems so easy, <laughs> right? Like, uh, it seems so simple uh, when you're actually writing the code. It's like a real world course. Because we get so used to like the magic of a compiler doing all this stuff for us when we're programming, we just take it for granted that it all just works and it's highly optimized and all this stuff. But uh, I mean, you've seen through these videos just how difficult it is to do all this work. So uh, you definitely have to give some claps, some accolades to compiler developers for making your life as a developer so easy. Okay, that's everything. And we now have completed our teeny tiny parser. Um, I can't thank Dr. Henley enough. This has been a really fun uh, set of tutorials to go through. Um, he mentions a bunch of uh, extra things that we can do to our compiler, like ASTs and optimizations and functions and all those other things. And uh, those are definitely good things to look into. But what I really liked about these tutorials is they were very simple. And so you didn't have to worry about all this additional complexity, such as the AST and the optimizations and all these other things that you would kind of get in a compiler's course in college. Uh, we got to kind of focus on the basics of the compiler and deep dive on those and get a really solid understanding of those, which I think was the advantage of uh, going through this particular set of tutorials and why I picked these set of tutorials is because they stayed very simple. Uh, so I applaud him for that. Uh, this was, again, uh, really fun, really awesome, uh, and I can't wait to see what other posts uh, Dr. Henley has in the future. Until next time, I will see you next week.